The Latin alphabet gave us our English alphabet. So many of the letters in Latin are the same as they are in English, although Latin doesn't have all of the letters that English has. Let's look at the letters themselves and how the Romans would have pronounced them. A, B, K, D, E, F, G, H, I, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, X, Ukraika and Zeta. There's a couple of notes about these consonants. So first, the Latin C was always hard. So what do I mean by that? It's always going to sound like a K in English, like the C in cat, and never like the C in cinch. It also never sounds like a CH, by the way. In medieval Latin and church Latin, the C sometimes had a CH sound, ch, but our classical pronunciation always has the C sound like a k. So this name is pronounced Caesar, not Caesar. The same goes for the G. It's always hard, like the G in gain. It's never going to be soft, like in gem. So fugitivus. The I can be a vowel or a consonant. The rule is pretty easy. If a word begins with an I and the next letter is a vowel, like in these words, it's actually a consonant and sounds like our Y. So these are pronounced yam, yuno, and yaktatus. Also, when the I is in between two other vowels later on in the word, it acts like a consonant too. So it's huyus and peor. In the Middle Ages, the consonantal I was differentiated from the vowelic I by making it a little bit longer and curling it. And so this is where the J comes from in English. And that's why the name in English is Juno. In Latin, just like in English, the Q is always followed by a U. And in this situation, the U never counts as a vowel. It's just part of the Q. So it's quis and equus. The Romans trilled their letter R and even described this as the dog letter because it sounded like a dog when it growls. Romanus and arma. The S is always pronounced like it is in the English sut and never like a Z as it is in rose. So in Latin, si and servus. The T also always sounds like our basic t sound like in time, and never like a sh or a ch, as sometimes happens in English with ratio. In Latin, that word is pronounced ratio. The U is actually like the I in that it is both a consonant and a vowel. The consonantal form of the U is actually a V, and it's traditional for many Latin textbooks to change all consonantal U's into V's, so you might not ever have to worry about this. But every so often you will pick up a Latin text and it will have only U's instead of V's. In this instance, the capital U looks like our English capital V. And that's why on monuments and inscriptions that date back to Roman times, all U's are V's because they're capitalized. It's pretty easy to get used to, though, especially if you've done quite a bit of Latin. The V in Latin is pronounced like a W sound. So Caesar's famous saying isn't veni vidi vici, but veni vidi wiki. One more quick note on pronunciation of consonants. Every so often you'll run across a CH, PH, or TH. These are usually from words derived from Greek and represent aspirated consonants. That means we don't pronounce these like we usually do in English, where CH is CH, PH is F, and TH is TH. Instead, in Latin, the CH is like a C with a breath of air after it, like the CH in character. So it's CARON. The PH is like a P, and the TH is like a T. This rule of pronunciation is probably the most frequently broken rule, excepting the trilling of the R's, which is just damn hard, in Latin classes by students, teachers, and professors alike. The Latin vowel is a different issue, and that's something I address in another video.